Morning, afternoon and evening everyone and uh, thanks for attending our webinar. Uh, my name is Dave Blakey. I'm the CEO and founder of Snapped and we have Nadine Arnold here as well uh, who's uh, head of Snapped Sales and uh, we'll be looking at SQL injections and web application firewalls today and how you can prevent against them and how they work and uh, how Snapped fits into that picture, obviously. If you do have any questions, there's a Q&A feature where you can ask them and then we'll get to them uh, maybe in the midpoint or at the end of the webinar. Uh, and otherwise at the end, you'll see our contact details and you can feel free to get in touch with us anytime. Great, so let's kick it off. Uh, so what we'll be looking at first is just a quick kind of introduction into what Snap is and what products like ours are uh, and what a web application firewall or a WAF is and then how SQL injections work, what the threat is and how uh, ADCs and WAFs in particular prevent against such a thing. So Snap is an ADC company um, and now an ADC is an application delivery controller. It's a product made up of three primary components. The first being load balancing. So uh, splitting traffic between all of your web servers in order to ensure that your site stays online, performs quickly and so on. Accelerating that traffic with a web accelerator. Uh, so getting the content to your users faster and offloading your web servers. And then particularly application firewalling, which is protecting against threats on those services, your website or e-commerce site or uh, shopping portals, whatever it might be. Now, SQL injections are what we're going to be covering today in this uh, and how WAFs prevent against them. So the first piece will be an explanation, an example of what a SQL or SQL injection is, uh, how they're executed, what their purpose is, and we'll look at a, a basic but actual example of one just to get everyone um, up to speed on the same page. And then we'll look at how you can prevent against that, both with products like uh, like a WAF, uh, as well as with you know better development practices, awareness, things like that. Now, uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is what is a SQL injection? So uh, a SQL injection is a broad term referring, referring to the exploitation of a bug on a website that allows an attacker to run malicious SQL statements. So that means that they get to execute a set of commands on your database server uh, that you had not anticipated. Now, that could be something simple and destructive to delete all of your information and cause your business downtime or uh, a loss in revenue, something like that. Uh, or they can leak private information, like there've been a lot of high profile ones recently uh, where people's passwords have been leaked from big websites. Um, you know, personal information, even banking information and so on, uh, as well as uh, potentially your own information, your own, your business's confidential information or files or uh, contacts and all of that, uh, whatever you might keep in your database server. So either, you know, to destroy it or to obtain it or to manipulate it in some fashion as well. And uh, that's what a SQL injection covers is an unintended use of your exposed kind of website or service uh, in order to manipulate or uh, abuse your database server in some fashion. It's the most prevalent means of attacking a web application today and an estimated 32% of live web applications are vulnerable today. Now this covers uh, essentially the entire internet but the important thing to mention here is that this is not just uh, you know, privately developed applications that have problems. Uh, all, all big ones in recent times have had WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, all the CMS platforms and apps that people run, um, SQL injection attacks all the time. That's why they are constantly getting patched and improved and fixed and so on. But uh, it continues to be uh, the biggest single target uh, for intruders today. So what I want to do is uh, look at an actual SQL injection attack example and see how it works and you know get a real example in everyone's mind. Now, what you're seeing on the left here is the login page to one of our servers, a Snap server, which some of you probably will already be quite familiar with. Uh, but what you see in particular is that it's asking for a username and password. Now, obviously very common, whether you're running a WordPress server, whether you've got your own service, whatever it might be, this is something that you might commonly use. Uh, but it's important to note that obviously it's not only 
uh, a login page, it, you know, it could be anything, but uh, commonly exploited are login pages. And here we ask a user to put in their username and their password. So something like uh, the word Dave for username and password one, two, three for the password. Let's hope it's actually stronger than that, but uh, it's probably not normally. <laughs> Uh, so what we then do with that information is we say to our okay, can you give us the information uh, related to the user Dave? Because we need to check if the password matches. So we say uh, to the database, select from users where username is dollar user. And in this case, dollar user is Dave because that's what was sent through. Uh, and the database then returns us all of Dave's information. And we can say, okay, is... Um, the password in the database, the same as the password that was entered, and if so, allow him in, if not, reject him. So you can see here how dollar $user becomes uh, the word Dave when it's actually run on the database server because your web application or program or whatever is replacing that with the real variable. Now, uh, if we instead type SQL into one of those fields, instead of just a username, then we can trick it into executing that SQL command. So, for example, I've put a very specific string in there, but if I instead said Dave, uh, uh, then inverted commas, semicolon, which ends an SQL command, and then said delete from inver uh, inverted comma users, when we then follow the same practice and we replace dollar user string, you can see we now have two commands being run. Select from users where username is Dave, and then delete from users. So if that was actually executed on the server, it would just delete all of the information in the user's table uh, and everything would be lost. Now, that's a, a fairly simple and destructive example, but it's also possible many times to get information out of the database, to select everybody's password, or alter them all, or things like that. Uh, and obviously, uh, most of the time, simple examples like this are protected against, but the same thing can exist in cookies and, uh, you know, API requests and just hundreds of places where uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities exist, essentially. But this is a good example of how someone might exploit that uh, just by simply filling in something different in a username field. Now, there's two primary types of SQL injection. Uh, in-band or classic, which is what I've shown you now, where you're trying to make changes directly to the database, either to get information or to delete something or to alter something. Uh, for example, I could have changed the password instead of just uh, deleting everything and then allow myself to log in. Um, what that involves is basically running direct commands on the SQL database and, and getting your information or changing your information. Then there's also blind injection. Uh, which allows you to infer information. So, for example, we might run a command which says, you know, if the first character of the password is an A, then uh, sleep for two seconds. If it's not, uh, don't sleep. And then we can rotate through the alphabet and see, you know, okay, is it an A, is it a B, is it a C, and then as we move to the second character and so on. Again, a very basic example, but it can get quite complicated. And you can imagine in an application where, you know, you may be checking thousands of variables and thousands of pages, uh, to ensure the sanity and safety of all of those uh, can be quite a, a task. And, you know, such is the reason why large companies like LinkedIn and WordPress and so on suffer from SQL injections, uh, you know, almost every year. Uh, WordPress has had many high-profile ones and is considered quite a well-written application. Now, uh, here is just some examples. So these are all within the last year, high-profile SQL uh, vulnerabilities. SQL injection vulnerabilities that happen. So WordPress I've mentioned, so very big CMS. vBulletin is one of the biggest forum softwares in the world. Uh, and even the US voting machines uh, for the elect election commission were uh, vulnerable to an SQL injection. So you can imagine um, when you have a homegrown application or internal service or something, how vulnerable it can be as well. Uh, especially when you consider some 70 or 80% of attacks happen from inside your your business, not just outside. So intranet sites and uh, the like are also, you know, uh, big targets for this type of attack. Uh, some facts about SQL injections. So the average cost of a minor SQL injection is estimated to be just under $200,000 to businesses. 27% of all web-based attacks are SQL injections. And 32%, like I mentioned, of all live web apps are considered to be vulnerable today. A lot of that is undiscovered vulnerabilities or unpatched vulnerabilities. So 
you know, how many of you might have or have clients who might have uh, a WordPress that's, you know, last updated six months ago, or some of them might be two years ago. Those will be vulnerable. And 97% of all data leaks uh, in the last year have been because of SQL injection attacks. So when you see leaks of passwords, things like that, uh, it's almost always a SQL injection. Now, protecting your application internally, the solution for this is not just deploy a WAF and, and be fine, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a full stack kind of solution. Awareness is the biggest part of it having your organization uh, from your security staff all the way to perhaps your developers if you have uh, be aware of the types of sql injections that are happening now uh, and improving your development standards around those testing things like that as well as penetration testing uh, you know a huge growing business obviously having uh, ethical hackers if you will uh, attempt to break into your site and service and find problems like this uh, and then code quality and analysis. So there's a lot of automated processes and things like that to be more aware of the threat. And, uh, you know, a WAF essentially is your last line of defense. Ideally, what you want is that the solution is not vulnerable. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, if places like WordPress and Joomla and LinkedIn and so on are having things slip, then uh, you can also make the assumption that it might happen to you. Now, uh, the final step, like I said, is protecting yourself with an application firewall. So in case it's not uh, clear yet, a WAF is a web application firewall. So it works specifically on web applications. And the first thing you will have heard of firewalls before many times, I'm sure. But if you, uh, you know, you deploy your firewall and the first thing you do is open port 80 or port 443, those are the web and uh, secure web ports. You open those ports up so that people can get to your website or services. And, you know, majority of attacks are happening on those ports. So you need something that doesn't just say, uh, you know, where's this traffic from? Where's it going to? Uh, you also need something that says, okay, well, what is, what are they requesting? What information are they sending? Are they sending a SQL injection attack? Is it, uh, you know, a suspicious attack? Is it a denial of service attack? Things like that. That's what web app firewalls look at. Uh, and that's what the space for WAFs is, is all around, really. Now, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, it operates on HTTP and HTTPS traffic exclusively and uh, is designed to keep both your servers safe as well as your users of your servers safe. Um, and it's made up of three primary components, the layer seven firewalling, like I said. So layer seven means application aware. So we're looking at, you know, not just, oh, are you coming in on port 80, but that you're asking for this page and that you're sending information that's usually sent to this page. And, you know, if you're putting in an email address, why would it have a backslash in it? Or why would it have double quotes, things like that? All of service protection. So rate and session limiting, you know, are people trying to brute force login pages? Are they trying to bring your website offline? Uh, and then access control. So blacklisting, whitelisting, uh, preventing people that shouldn't be accessing the site. These are the primary components that are included in OAF. And obviously today we're looking primarily at, uh, at part one, the layer seven firewall. Now, uh, using a layer seven app firewall, you can see at the top here, there's a, uh, it's actually a screenshot from a snapped uh, system, but what it's designed to do is particularly prevent unknown or unanticipated threats. So look for uh, patterns or keywords that seem out of place that shouldn't be on your site. Uh, you can run in learning mode, for example, so it will train on your site and block anything that it shouldn't, uh, that it hasn't seen before, things like this. So the, the, the assumption is that there's a threat that you prepared for um, that we need to protect against, right? So it will try to uh, like proactively prevent unknown exploits or exploits in your application that's not public or things like that by looking for common things. So you can see uh, rule 100,000 in there is saying, you know, it doesn't have the word select or union or update in it uh, in, a, in a post. It's, that may be suspicious. Does it have double quotes and maybe suspicious? So, uh, you know, is it have hex encoding and so on? So there's a huge rule set around that. Um, but also you, you know, primarily that it can learn from your website and uh, begin to understand, you know, okay, people always put alphanumeric characters in this field and uh, people never send information to this page. They just get information and so on. Uh, and it, again, it's important to remember that no system is ever foolproof. So it's adding another layer of defense uh, in your 
entire stack of defense. You know, you'll have many components from the way you wrote the program to where you sourced it from, to your firewall, to your staff. Uh, and this is a final kind of layer of defense um, designed to particularly prevent, like I said, against something that you can't anticipate or that you don't know. Uh, and is uh, a critical, a business critical function. So it makes up an important part of PCI security standards today. Um, even more so in the new recommendations and standards and sort of requirements in a lot of them. Um, and is also included uh, as a part of the SNAP product, uh, as I had mentioned. So for those of you who are existing clients, all of your licenses already have the web app firewall functionality and you can use it. For those of you who are potential clients or wanting to learn about it, um, you can get a trial from us. So it's a no commitment free trial and it includes the web app firewall. You can play with it, set it up, test it on your infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. It's not invasive, so you can you know, boot it up uh, in a VM on the side or something and just try it out. But it's obviously heavily recommended um, you know, with or without of Snapped that you look at a, a WAF solution as an additional layer to any kind of exposed uh, web websites or services, especially ones that are uh, dealing with database that has some value in it. Uh, and when I say exposed, I don't mean internet facing only, I mean internal as well, like I mentioned, uh, probably the biggest threat is inside of your network as opposed to simply outside and also the most unprotected. Uh, so as I mentioned, you can get a free trial anytime. Uh, you can obviously get it, there's a link there. Um, you can also contact us at any time put up here, uh, you can see my address and Nadine's address if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, and then if you have any questions, you can ask them now. I see there's a few questions already, so I'll go through some of those. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed the brief look at SQL injections uh, and how to protect against them. Uh, and thanks for attending. Let me see what the questions are at the moment. Um, can you use WAF with the load balancer, or do you need to run the accelerator? Yes, okay, great. So uh, as you know, as I mentioned initially, we have a load balancer and uh, web accelerator and application uh, The application firewall specifically runs as a module for the accelerator. So you need to have traffic going through the accelerator. In what we call an ABC setup, you'll usually have the load balancer sending requests to your backends, and the accelerator speaking to your clients. Uh, and then the accelerator passing any non-cache to accelerator requests to the load balancer. So clients come into the accelerator, get scanned by the application firewall, pass to the load balancer, to your servers, and then back through the same channel uh, would be how you normally deploy it. The next one, uh, where do you normally deploy an ADC? Okay, so not on your web server. Uh, so this is a standalone device. You would uh, install it either, you know, as a VM, uh, we provide VM images, things like that, um, or on an existing Linux server. You can load Snap for Linux, uh, but then your clients will connect to that new server and that server will connect to your web server or web servers if you're using advanced as well. Um, does this affect every SQL server in the same way? Uh, yes and no. So, uh, as you know, there's many SQL servers, MySQL, Aurora, Microsoft, Oracle, and so on. They're all, I don't want to use the word vulnerable because it's not a problem with the SQL server, but they can all be vulnerable to SQL injections because your application has been given permission to run queries on the database, obviously. And if your application allows a dangerous request to be sent through, then obviously you'll see uh, you know, that request will run on the server. Now, things like blind SQL injections, certain servers uh, have different ways of allowing them to run and so on. So you'll find things that exploit, you know, versions of MySQL and not uh, Microsoft's or Oracle's, or you'll find things that are targeted at Oracle's. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it does affect all SQL servers. And what types of applications can be vulnerable to SQL attacks? Is it mostly login pages? Okay, so all applications. Um, common things are like uh, having SQL attacks in your headers for cookies or anything that's running queries on a database. Even if it's just getting information, you're probably storing the fact that that page was visited. Um, maybe you're storing by what user or um, maybe logging the user's browser or user agent or his referrer. Or if you're taking information from the client, uh, you need to assume that that information can't be trusted. And not doing that and not sanitizing it properly is uh, 
the, basically the roots of SQL injections uh, and being able to, you know, them being affected. Uh, I see here as well, Anton has asked, uh, could you share the source of statistics regarding the percentage of applications affected? That was from this page, I believe. So honestly, I don't have it offhand. Um, it's from public, uh, like third party uh, places, like some are from PCI uh, reports and things like that. Um, you know, within a, a range, you'll find that essentially everyone uh, agrees pretty much on the same thing. Um, a lot of people would attribute a higher percentage of data leaks um, to SQL injections because obviously almost all data is in SQL. Um, but uh, no, I'm afraid I don't have actually the source of all of the statistics on hand for the webinar. Uh, and I think that's it. So. If there's any other questions, anything like that, we'll obviously follow up with you uh, just with a, an email to thank you for coming and any links or anything that are relevant. Uh, you can feel free to contact us, our team on sales at snap.net, uh, myself or Nadine. And we've also loaded several handouts here so you can get the data sheet, introduction document, and so on if you'd like to do some more reading. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I certainly encourage you to investigate application firewalls in general. Um, and if you'd be interested in a SNAP trial, then, uh, you know, definitely get in touch with us or you can run your own trial as well. And thank you for attending. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Have a great afternoon, evening or morning, everybody. Goodbye.